The story begins with two criminals fleeing with a sack of gems. Stinkfly approaches them. They fire at him, but he avoids them. They are pursuing him around the city. Stinkfly uses slime to cover their helicopter's windshield and halt their propeller. As the chopper falls into the ocean, they eject. Stinkfly snatches them, flies away, and transforms back into Ben. The robbers are apprehended, and Ben wonders whether anybody can confront him on the rooftop. A crimson robotic thing watches him from a neighboring rooftop. Max picks up Cooper, the grandson of an old plumber friend, from summer camp in the morning. Ben and Gwen are arguing in the rust bucket over a radio contest, which leads them to lose. The reward was a ticket to a movie premiere, and Cooper informs them that he has won. Three individuals in trench jackets break away from their group at Fort Knox. They take off their jackets, revealing themselves to be the circus freaks, and step aside to expose Sublimino, who hypnotizes the guards. Ben and Gwen are being really friendly to Cooper in the rust bucket. Max contacts Ben and Gwen to show them a video of the circus freaks breaking into the Fort Knox vault. Cooper inquires about the video. Cooper claims to know everything about the Omnitrix and the plumbers, thanks to Max, and wants an explanation. The gang travels to Fort Knox. Ben volunteers to monitor Cooper. Inside, they discover guards behaving like birds and a molten vault. Guards fire at them, and they flee. Ben becomes XLR-8 and rescues the Chicken Guardians. XLR-8 then flees, pushing the guards aside and faces the guards who are firing at him. He knocks them down, but more appear. They are aiming a huge rifle towards Max and Gwen. An alarm sounds, and the guards are knocked down by an empty forklift. Cooper was in command. When the four enter the vault, they discover that all of the gold is still there. Cooper discovers a melted passage, and XLR-8 reverts to Ben. An ancient plumber's base may be found within the tunnel. Max is baffled as to what the freaks want. Elsewhere, the freaks have a piece of technology that the red robot steals. Sir Driscoll receives it from him. Acid Breath struggles with Driscoll and rebels against him, but the Forever Ninja easily defeats him. Cooper has created an autopilot system in the rust bucket. Max opens a map of former plumber bases. An alarm is sounding in the Seattle Space Needle. Cooper claims to have created a turbo system. Max takes it to Seattle, but it lacks brakes. Ben changes into Diamond Head and climbs the roof. The rust bucket breaks through the crystal barriers created by Diamond Head. He fashions a diamond anchor and launches it. It succeeds to halt the rust bucket but completely destroys the roadway. Wasps emerge from the base of the structure and assault Diamond Head. They combine into Clancy, and Diamond Head attacks him, showing that Clancy has evolved into an insect monster. Gwen uses a charm that directs the wasps onto Clancy, saving Cooper from him. Rojo assaults them in an elevator and cuts the elevator. Diamond Head stops the elevator and transports them to their desired floor. Charmcaster and Rojo are standing in front of a hole in the wall. Dr. Anemo appears with a bat that emits a sonic scream, knocking Diamond Head down. The three antagonists encircle Diamond Head. Gwen's magical abilities are defeated by Charmcaster. The Tennysons go, leaving Cooper behind. Diamond Head battles Anemo. Gwen battles Charmcaster, and Max battles Rojo. Clancy also appears and assaults Max. Rojo snatches a component that Max recognizes. He orders Diamond Head and Gwen to put a halt to Rojo. Diamond Head throws a Nemo off the building and goes after Rojo. Regrettably, he reverts back to Ben. Cooper catches the component after Ben stumbles and drops it. Clancy has him cornered and he shakes it off. Clancy chases it down, but a Nemo catches it. Rojo terrorizes Ben, but Clancy captures her and a Nemo captures Charmcaster and the baddies flee. Max says in the rust bucket that the component stolen by the baddies was one half of the key to the sub-energy, a gigantic energy source provided as a gift from an extraterrestrial culture. When they get to meet to Rushmore, they are ambushed by the whole gang. Driscoll introduces them as the Negative Ten and places them in the company of the Tennysons. When Thumb Skull attacks the rust bucket but gets electrocuted by it, the Negative Ten launch an attack on the Tennysons and Cooper. The windows on the rust bucket close, and it is shielded by an electric field. Rojo fires at it, and it responds by firing back at her. The charm caster uses magic to toss rocks, but the rocks are unaffected. Clancy also strikes, but his insects are slain. The Forever King orders the negative ten not to enter the rust bucket, but Thumb Skull slams the door open nonetheless. Ben, Gwen, and Cooper look to be in distress. The acid breath assaults are holograms. The holographic gadget blows up. Outside, the Forever Ninja has trapped the genuine Tennysons and Cooper. Cooper and Gwen flee, and Four Arms chases them down and tosses them. Four Arms orders his family to flee and launches an assault on the Negative Ten. Cooper is assaulted by Animo, who also assaults Max and Gwen. Cooper flees, and Gwen follows. He makes contact with the base and opens a hatch, almost passing out. Animo pursues them, 
but Max closes the door and he smashes. They descend a chute into the base. They are watching Four Arms versus Clancy on the screen. He is surrounded by the negative 10, and he battles them. The Forever Ninja slaps Four Arms away, reverting to Ben. The negative 10 is shot by a gun that emerges from the base. Gwen fires an explosion from the chute. Rojo blasts open the door and enters, only to be blasted out again. Max's camera gets destroyed by Driscoll. Ben is now inside the plumber headquarters, and Max recognizes Driscoll's voice and understands he was a plumber who was caught stealing alien technology. He was banished. Max concludes he must have joined the Forever Knights and risen to the position of king. Cooper explains how he opened the hatch to Gwen, saying that he can see into machines and make them operate, although it causes him a headache. He constructs a drone. Max dons an alien exosuit. Heat Blast completes the fortifications by fusing metal canisters together and reverts to Ben. The party enters the locked area where the sub-energy is kept. Max equips the youngsters with headphones that reveal the sub-energy and places bombs around the facility. An alarm sounds. A Nemo appears, accompanied by a mutant prairie dog. To combat him, Ben changes into Wildmutt. While Max captures a Nemo, Wildmutt, and the mutant prairie dog battle, the last 10 people come. Cooper launches his security drones, which attack the Tennysons due to Driscoll's reprogramming. The four flee, and Wildmutt destroys the drones before departing. Max detonates explosives, destroying drones as well as the bridge that leads to the sub-energy. Cooper is ordered to assault the Tennysons in the sub-energy chamber. He creates a drone against which Wildmutt battles. Gwen puts Cooper in a headpiece to prevent him from influencing things, and Wildmutt transforms back into Ben. Cooper is kept safe by Max. Gwen performs spells. Max puts on his costume, and Ben changes into Eye Guy as they prepare for fight. The negative 10 shows up at assaults. Gwen uses magic to combat Charmcaster. Driscoll approaches the sub-energy and Max prevents him, and the Forever Ninja assaults Max. Gwen and Charmcaster are stuck in a draw, which sends Rojo flying. Clancy and Eye Guy battle, with Eye Guy freezing Clancy. And Nemo comes after him, but he blows him away. Gwen is pursued by stone monsters sent by the charm caster. When Eye Guy comes, he transforms back into Ben. Driscoll inserts the keys into their sports and utilizes the sub energy. He walks away. Ben and Gwen do the negative 10 into a brawl about who is the greatest. Max orders Ben to stop Driscoll before leaving, and Driscoll and the Forever Ninja emerge from the base, summoning a tank. Ben uses a plumber rifle to smash the tank, but the Forever Ninja attacks and destroys the gun. Driscoll arrives and inserts the sub-energy into his armor, becoming supercharged. He blasts the mountain, dumping boulders on Ben. Inside, Acid Breath orders the Ten to fight the Tennysons rather than each other, and they do so. Gwen uses a spell to extract the keys, locking the negative Ten in the force field. Cooper is set free. Upchuck eats his way out of the boulder mound and shoots the knights outside. The Red Knight strikes, but he spits them back, destroying him. Driscoll is attacked by Upchuck, but it has little impact. Driscoll fires at him. Upchuck extracts and consumes the sub-energy. He widens and lets it go. He rotates, shoots Driscoll, and unleashes an energy blast that demolishes Mount Rushmore. Ben brings out Max, Gwen, and Cooper and shows them Driscoll's abandoned armor. Max leaves Cooper off at his home, and Cooper admits that he fabricated a ticket in order to get Ben and Gwen to speak to him. And this story ends here.